Throughout his life, Steve Jobs has always believed in a few key principles. He was a perfectionist and strived for nothing less than perfection in his products and stressed that to the people who worked with him. He wanted to revolutionize the world and did so by endlessly working to make everything about the Apple products perfect. He advanced technology more than once with the Apple II, with the iMac, and again with the iPhone. That's how he launched an industry and became the leader of the most recognizable company in the world. To the eyes of the public, he was a genius. Through the new technology he introduced, it is undeniable that Steve Jobs has moved the world forward. Jobs had a rough early childhood. His biological parents never graduated college and were worried their son wouldn't feel pushed towards a higher education. He was put up for adoption. At the last minute, the people who were supposed to adopt him changed their minds, deciding they wanted a girl instead. His parents received a call late at night, being asked if they wanted a baby boy. They said, of course. His biological mother later found out that his mother had never graduated from college and his father had never graduated from high school. She refused to sign the papers for months until his parents promised Jobs would go to college. Jobs was a difficult child. The only things he wanted to do in school were read books and chase butterflies. His father taught him how to work with tools. Those lessons initiated his mental state of perfectionism and aesthetic. He had to be removed from the class many times because of his disruptive behavior. Instead of his father being mad, he instead defended Jobs, saying, If you can't keep him interested, it's your fault. During Jobs' junior year in high school, his friend Bill Fernandez was working on a computer with his neighbor, Steve Wozniak. Wozniak was an amazing math, science, and electronics student, and got along well with Jobs when they first met. Jobs dropped out of college after only one year because he couldn't stand to see his parents going through the trouble to pay for his tuition when he didn't even see the point anyway. He was able to drop out of required classes and drop in on ones he was interested in. Jobs was looking for a job after dropping out of college and decided to try for a job at Atari, a leading video game distributor. He walked into the lobby and stated that he wouldn't leave until they gave him a job. He was hired and eventually given the task of creating the game Breakout. He got Wozniak to help him, promising to split the $700 he would be paid for the design. After the game was made, Wozniak got his $350, but later found out that Jobs had been given a $5,000 bonus. Jobs said he never received the bonus, though Atari insisted they gave it to him. Wozniak was so inspired by the innovation that was computer processors that, like so many times before, he decided to make his own. Eventually, he created a computer with a monitor, mouse, and keyboard. He typed on the keyboard, and words appeared on the monitor. It was a success. Jobs encouraged Wozniak not to share his accomplishment with his computer club. Instead, Jobs explained, they should sell the device. Jobs offered to sell circuit boards to a nearby computer store, but the owner told him that customers wanted built computers. While Jobs watched over the development of the machine, Wozniak began to work on his own new machine, one that had color, sound, and graphics so that he could play Atari Breakout. It would also have a built-in computing language so users can code right away. This new computer would be for people who really wanted to do things. The Apple II, as this machine was called, sold incredibly well, and sales only grew over time. The company's new projects, on the other hand, the Lisa and the Apple III, didn't do well at all. Lisa was named after Jobs' daughter, even though Jobs coldly denied his ex-girlfriend's claims. There was a 94.41% chance that he was the father, according to a DNA test, but he still didn't act as a father figure for years. Meanwhile, Jobs became very interested in the Macintosh. He yelled at employees for them to meet his every exact desire for the machine, even tiny details that no consumer would notice. The company needed someone to take Jobs' passion and turn it into progress. They chose John Scully for that job. Scully was able to reason with Jobs, getting him to raise the price of the, for the Macintosh in exchange for the huge ad campaign. They hired a professional crew to make a Super Bowl ad in 1984. What could go wrong? While Jobs and Scully loved the commercial, the rest of the company found it disturbing and even tried to stop it from airing. It may have been strange, but it got people talking, and that was enough to get people aware of the upcoming product. The Macintosh was formally introduced at a shareholder meeting, 
where Jobs pulled the device out of a bag by the handle on top. He inserted a floppy disk to showcase the new features, and finally pushed a button on the mouse which made Macintosh say, Hello, I am Macintosh. It sure is great to get out of that bag. The crowd exploded with excitement. Sales went up, but just as quickly went down. They didn't sell as many as they were supposed to, and tension within the company led to Jobs and Scully getting into arguments. It's failing. That's a fact. It's overpriced. There's no evidence that it's... I'm the evidence! I'm the world's leading expert in the Mac, John. What's your resume? You're issuing contradictory instructions. You're insubordinate. You make people miserable. Our top engineers are fleeing to Sun, Dell, HP. Wall Street doesn't know who's driving the bus. We've lost hundreds of millions in value, and I'm the CEO of Apple, Steve. That's my resume. But before that, you sold carbonated sugar water, right? I sat in a garage with Wozniak and invented the future because artists lead and hacks ask for a show of hands. All right, well, this guy's out of control. I'm perfectly willing to hand in my resignation tonight, but if you want me to stay, you can't have Steve. Settle him out. He can keep a share of stock so he gets our newsletter. He'll have to sever his connection to Apple. I'm dead serious. I want the secretary to call for a vote. The board of the company sided with Scully, removing jobs from the Macintosh and Lisa projects leaving him with no work to do. Jobs resigned in September 1985 because he wasn't done innovating the world. He founded a new company called Next and bought Pixar from George Lucas for $5 million. Pixar was eventually bought by Disney, who had bought some of Pixar's computers to help with their own films in the past because of the t success of Toy Story. Pixar is now seen as one of the greatest movie studios in the world and made many successful films. Many believe it impossible for Pixar to create something that isn't a hit. The next computer, however, did not sell well. The design was very bad and the company had a lot of competition. Although the machine itself was bad, consumers noted that the software was actually very good. Meanwhile, Microsoft began to dominate the computer industry and Apple was becoming desperate. Next was bought by Apple for $400 million, more than eight times what it had earned over the course of ten years. Jobs had returned to Apple. Jobs later introduced the iPod, a music player that could store thousands of songs in your pocket, but was easy to use with minimal buttons. Jobs never liked buttons or styluses. God gave us 10 styluses, he said. His team began to work on a touchscreen device that would also work as a cell phone. There were a lot of bugs at first, and Jobs furiously sent his team back to work. At the next Macworld event, it was introduced as being the greatest iPod, a cell phone, and the internet all in one in your pocket. Jobs continued his pressured ways against his employees despite having been living with cancer for years. On August 24, 2011, Jobs resigned from Apple as he was too sick to continue his work. And on October 5, 2011, Jobs passed away. The impacts of Apple are not only likely the most influential in recent history, but have definitely revolutionized the way of life of billions of people. The average United States household has 1.6 Apple devices in it, and people use their mobile devices every day. Many wouldn't have the jobs they do if Apple didn't exist, and we would live in a much less convenient world. Apple launched the industry faster than anyone thought it could, and what they were able to accomplish is amazing. It's not hard to see why the history of this company and its founders is important. Many other brands in the industry wouldn't exist if not for Apple. It and many other companies continue to change the world every day. One of the most revolutionary events in recent history happened all because a few people saw something that interested them and thought, why don't we try that? In less than 50 years, computers went from humongous machines that overheated and could only solve basic math facts to devices small enough to fit in your pocket that can do anything you want them to. That's an achievement not much can stand up to. Whether you like Jobs or not, whether you like Apple or not, they did change the world forever.